They all stood up and they abused me. And point of order after point of order was made. I, 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 the, the parliament was told, wasn't it terrible that Mr. Farage had behaved like this? Uh, somebody else said I'd behaved like a football hooligan, which I took real exception to. Um, I was told by the then president of the parliament that I should withdraw my statement so that it could be expunged from the record or face the full legal ramifications of what I'd just done. I mean, and, and of course, nothing happened because it was entirely true. The bloke had been convicted of embezzlement. But this is what you're up against here. It, 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 you know, continually, they throw the abuse at us and we fight back with fact. And okay. European, European... Union Member of Parliament from the uh, UK, Nigel Farage, is our guest. I want to skip ahead in the 30 minutes that this went on to just one of the people on mic where he's telling you you're not allowed to criticize them, but then he doesn't tell her she's wrong for calling you a a, a, a monkey. The, the, the taller you climb up the tree, the more your butt is exposed. Here is the clip from the, uh, from the uh, commissar from Poland. Here it is. Steve. Stay, save their integrity, personal integrity. And Mr. Farage, I'd like to say something, Hungarian quotation for you. It's good that you are here because if the monkey goes up to the tree, it's better seen how red is his popo. <laughs> well, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> they can call me what they like, I don't care. <laughs> they can call me what they like. You know, if they think they're really helping their cause, by just throwing continual abuse at me, they're wrong. They're doing it because they're frightened. And what they're frightened of is that the majority of people in Britain and France and Germany and right across Europe, the vast majority of them, want to live in democratic nation states. They do not want this. Absolutely. I mean, the statements you're making, I mean, you're clearly in the right. All of us for liberty and sovereignty and, and, and true free republics, uh, representative democracy, we're in the right. They're in the wrong. And for decades, when we would try to cover the plan for the European Union to go global, when we would read official UN documents calling for global government, global governance, the media would call us kooks and nuts trying to keep people from having a real debate. But now that their system's out in the open, it's actually backfired on them because hundreds of millions of people have learned about the New World Order, were told it didn't exist. Now they're admitting it exists, but saying it's good. And you talk about the fear in their eyes. I'm seeing that here. And they beg us. They go, please don't talk about how we're tyrants. Please don't talk about how we're undemocratic. Please don't talk about how we're robbing people and want socialism. Please, 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 because people will think you're a kook. No, they're begging us not to stand up against them. Your comments on that? Well, we've got to stand up and fight. Um, there's, a, there's a fantastic quotation from a guy called Burke, who was an English philosopher. And he wrote, and again, it's 17th century stuff, but, but often these old principles remain good. And he wrote that all it takes for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. And I would put it to you, Alex, and I would put it to your audience, that what is actually happening in terms of democracy and sovereignty around the Western world is nothing short of evil. And it's our duty to stand up and fight for this. Do you know, those that went before us in previous generations, you know, they had to fight it out in muddy trenches in northern France and in many cases give up their lives to have democracy, freedom and self-respect. Um, what we're being called upon to do is nothing like as, as irksome or as difficult as that, but we have to stand up and do it. And I'm pleased to say that increasingly on this side of the pond, people are beginning to do so. Well, I don't want to take away from World War II veterans and people, amazing folks, but I've read a lot of psychology uh, uh, perspective on this, and sometimes it's harder to morally stand up against a political system when the political system is advertising itself uh, as as the only orthodoxy, sometimes moral courage is harder than when you know people are shooting at you and everybody's on your side, on your side, and they're on their side, and you're fighting. That's a lot cleaner and more focused, and you know what you're dealing with. Dealing with the duplicity of, you know, as you said, this German member of the EU said, look, we'll just beat you 50 underhanded ways. You know, I mean, it's the fact that it's a covert operation that we're countering. And, 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 and so what can people do in the U.K.? Because you talked about your party just exploding. How do yeah. folks get behind uh, the U.K. Independence Party? Uh, how do people, from your own perspective, 
uh, become leaders against the New World Order, against this global uh, group of, of, of tyrants who are, net, who are networked on a planetary scale. From your experience, what can people do in Texas and in England and in Germany and, and all over the world? Well, at the end of the day, um, however much our democracies have been devalued, and they have, and however much our freedoms have been taken away from us, which they have, but still, at the end of the day, we do have a system where the people that have the power to commit these things have to be voted in by us, all right? So the ultimate power, short of rioting, um, you know, and I hope it won't get to that, but the ultimate power that we have over the political class is the ability to get rid of them, is the ability for them to lose their positions. And, and, and you know, that's why, okay, it's taken time, these things don't happen overnight, and your point about moral courage being a difficult thing to show, I and mean, I accept that, and, and that is a perfectly good point. But increasingly, what we're finding in England is that people are, are gaining the confidence and are feeling that they've got to speak out, not just because it's a moral duty, but also because, you know, anyone that's got children and grandchildren can surely see the lessons of history. And the lessons of history are clear. If you force people, as we're doing in Europe, to live in a different state, under a different form of government, over which they have no effective control, that is a recipe in the future, not for peace, but for civil disorder and possibly even for war. So we are beginning to see people showing the courage, breaking out of their normal tribal party political lines, and there'll come a point, there'll come a point where UKIP becomes so big that something will give in our political system. But it's, ha it's having the willingness to take away from those politicians the one thing they need, which is your vote at election time. Well, that's a great point. And then obviously, every man and woman listening to your voice across the globe, we're on satellite, shortwave, internet, AM and FM stations all over North America, needs to understand that none of us are going to save the world overnight. It's everybody doing a little bit to educate someone, to explain to them about the unelected tyranny of this global corporate system that's been set up and, and, and to understand that, as you pointed out, uh, Mr. Farage, that every generation has to face tyranny. And the tyranny we're facing is, is, is cloaked in respectability, cloaked in uh, Madison Avenue public relations propaganda, but is even more deadly than some of the past uh, corruptions that we've dealt with. And, and that people had better get moving against this now.